you're so wanting to have this thing in you and a part of your life, and you're so excited that it's going to enrich your life, only find out that it's not alive. All right, let's go to verse 15. These desires give birth to sinful action, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Now, we see a pattern in this. Desire, deception, disobedience, death. So James is outlining for them, listen, you guys, this is how it happens. It starts with your desire, okay? It goes from desire to deception. You're enticed, you're dragged away, the disobedience, and then you end up in this place called death. And I struggle with verse 15 because I, I see the imagery that's here, and honestly, for me, it's really uncomfortable. And it could be just because of my own story, but I read this, and I go, James, surely you could have come up with a different way of writing this part of the text, because James uses the imagery of a person who becomes impregnated by their desire. There's something that they want, and they become impregnated by it. And that, that thing that they've taken in their life now becomes hidden for a while. right? And uh, Shannon, when she was uh, pregnant, uh, she was, we were together. We had a child. And uh, Shannon would give me the announcement, hey, Kev, you know what? I'm expecting a baby. Oh, we did. But she looks so small, right? I'm like, you're not expecting a baby. You're expecting two, two months in, three months in, oop. Five months in, oop. I won't do the last one because I'll get in trouble when I get home. But <laughs> the, you knew. You knew, right? Oh, you really are pregnant. And um, there's this thing that's happening within our lives. He says, these desires give birth to sinful actions. And maybe you think right now it's in you and it's hidden. You're pregnant with this desire, this thing that you're doing that you're part of. No one else is going to see it. They're not even going to know. And slowly it begins to show. And as it begins to show, he says it plays itself out in your life. You start seeing sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, again, it's growing within you, it gives birth to And I, I'm going to use the words that come to my mind. A stillborn. You're so wanting to have this thing in you and a part of your life, and you're so excited that it's going to enrich your life, only find out that it's not alive. And it's confusing because in most literature, when we talk about newborns and talk about birth and pregnancy, it's about this new life. It's such beautiful imagery of what's potential. But James is trying to catch the church's attention to say, you want these things in your life, you allow it into your life, and it produces and it grows all this horrible stuff, and it ends up just dead. And you wonder, why am I empty? You're lonely, and you think, you know what, if I just... Uh, I'm going to be promised, like, friends, and it's going to be great. And, and so you allow yourself to go to places where you think that these connections, these relationships will happen. And, and you're starting to experience it. You're starting to actually see it. But then you find yourself in patterns and habits with people that you are, probably shouldn't be because they're dragging you down the wrong drive. And so James is saying, you know what, that when this desire come, is a part of your life, be careful that you're not deceived, that you don't walk in disobedience because it's only going to end up and death. And so there's a, there should be a sorrow there. As a church, we go, oh, God, you called us to produce life. So take me to verse 16 next. Because this is really interesting. Then James goes on next, and he responds with, so don't be misled. Now, I'm curious, because how do you hear that? Because you could hear that like a, don't be misled. Right? Or you could hear that like, don't be misled, all right? Because either of those are totally wrong. Looking this up in the original Greek, it was so beautiful. Because what James is actually saying there is, my dearly loved ones. And, and as a dad who has young adult kids, I, I hear myself in saying, my kids... I want to protect you. I want to guard you. I, I want you to do what's right. Make the right choices within your life. Don't, don't, don't choose the things that are only going to bring in death. And one of the frustrating things about being a parent is your children have to make their own decisions. Isn't that a beautiful gift that God gave us? <laughs> ah! I know God's plan for your life. Let me reveal it to you. They have to choose. 
And so James in this letter, this is not a letter of, I don't hear reprimand in his tone when he's talking about temptation. What I hear is a, a father saying, I love you, and I, I don't want to see you go down this road that's only going to bring death. Let's hit verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father. He's the only one that can really satisfy new life. Who created all the lights in the heavens, he never changes or casts a shadow or casts a shifting shadow. See, God cannot change for the worse because he is holy. He cannot improve or change for the better because he is perfect. So if you know Christ personally, you have this personal connection with God through Jesus Christ. So why are you looking anywhere else? He is God, our Father. Not only is the one who created and has the possibility and the capacity and the beauty of his lights that never changes what he's promised is always there. He's not going to disappoint. And it's almost a contrast to what we read about sin in that the things that God promised to you, they will never come out into death. They will never, you will never be twisted into God's promise. And what, what he says, he delivers. So we take those desires and we turn down a different road. We go towards godliness. We, we feel that tug of temptation. This beautiful lure and this little hook and we just, we don't hang around. If you and I flirt with sin, we will fall for it every time. Instead, we need to shift our focus and we need to change direction. And honestly, in preparing for today, I kept hearing you need to just run. Some people think it's very heroic to battle and to fight and to get engaged and um, I, I, man, just, just run. Just, just run. Let's go to verse 18, and uh, I'll finish up for this morning. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we out of all creation became. Okay, um, I didn't spend enough time on this in the first service, and we have a few minutes. I think this is beautiful. Um, he chose to give birth to us by giving us this true word uh, in the Greek is mentioned five times within the New Testament. The reference is the good news, the gospel. God loves you so much that he has given you the good news, that God loved the world, he sent his son into the world to take on the sins of the world, died on the cross, a penalty of payment that we deserve, he took it on himself, died a death in agony, and rose again in life. That God and we out of all creation became his, say these two words for me, prized possession. See, the reason this matters so much is because your father in heaven loves you so much. It, it, you know, it's, it, I, I came across a quote that I, I thought just kind of nailed it. Um, Temptation is a test of your relationship, not your self-control. That's ultimately what it's about. It's about you having this relationship with God. It, it's, it's so much more than, well, you know, if you go down this road, it's going to get bad, it's going to die. That's a result, that's a consequence. But the greater reason that this is not a great deal is that God should be all you need. God is the one you love. 